Trade City Union Bank, mm. a very large South Indian enterprise uh, type of a bank. In the second part of the article, taking help from you and DJ, I had written about the seven layers mm. that uh, we usually encounter. You know, all the the data part of it, and then the labeling, shaping the you know information, mm. and then getting the insight infrastructure. For a gold loan uh, deposit, what is the return prediction? Mm. And that is going to happen. First phase of the pandemic, and we had to do a on-premise deployment where our teams had to be in the customer base. Act of making sure that we continuously build models, not on a daily basis. It's not like doing CA/CD for engineering. And DJ, thanks for that explanation with respect to the terminology part. I think it clarified a lot of things. But I also wanted to ask you a little bit based on our own customer experience. I'll take City Union Bank, mm. a very large South Indian enterprise uh, type of a bank, where we deployed a model, uh, an artificial intelligence model that is giving them a churn prediction, uh, uh, you know, a solution with an accuracy mm-hmm. of about ninety nine point four percent. I wanted to understand, uh, you know, when 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 I wrote some of these articles under the title "Nothing Artificial About It." Um, some of the readers had pointed to a very interesting thing in the second part of the article. Taking help from you and DJ, I had written about the seven layers mm. that uh, we usually encounter uh, when it comes to the steps for an AI implementation. I have the steps with me right here, but uh, I know you know this better. You know all the the data part of it, and then the labeling, shaping the you know information, mm-hmm. and then getting the insights, infrastructure, and everything. Yeah. There are specific names that you have given for them. We don't have to get into that actually. But I wanted to understand. As to how did we come up with these layers? What did we see in these layers, and what kind of challenges we faced in these layers when we did the implementation for CUB? DJ, I wanted you to tell us more from a business standpoint. Well, I want Jana you to focus more on the specific layers in which you encountered the technical challenges. I'll sure. start with you. When it came to City Union Bank, uh, the requirement was very very clear. What they wanted to do, right? For For a gold loan uh, deposit, what is the churn prediction, mm. and that is going to happen. So, when that requirement came in, we started with the data first of all. So, what are all the base data that you uh, that the organization has, and using those base data, what is that we can do? Is how it all started. So, when we went to the customer, uh, what are all the base data using which you want us to do the prediction? Then, mm. you know, there were. loan related uh, data that were available within the organization the transaction related uh, data that was available the customer related data that right. was available unfortunately since it's a in banking industry the data was very clean and pristine right? right there was not much of engineering work that we need to and it is all need to labeled and classified also Which sorry to interrupt you there. Which means that the first three layers that we spoke about was available in available form, since since it's a banking uh, right. uh, industry, right? So that's uh, that's why uh, you know you had also beautifully written in the article. While these are all the bases, not necessary. Every but everything has to go from one to seven. Correct. Right? Uh, correct. It keeps changing from uh, customer to customer, or it keeps changing from requirement to requirement. Within a customer itself, the requirement uh, could change. So when that was available, then it became Jana's forte, right? Mm. Okay, this is what we know. What is going to be the actual model that is going to work? And uh, uh, Jana has always been a good advocate of you know, don't go invent everything, mm. uh, right? When there is something that is available. Take it, which has crossed, you know, forty to sixty percent of the C, right? It is yeah. only for us to then pass the balance percent uh, percentage based on the requirement okay. that has been uh, given to us, and that's typically went about, and that's why we quickly turned around I did see. the implementation, and in fact, when and. I'm sure uh, you know we were all part of it, and uh, during the pandemic is when this oh, yeah. uh, uh, entire uh, project itself came into happened, play, yeah. uh, play. Right, Correct. that's when Correct. we got the contract. In spite of that, even before the pandemic ended, in I think it, it was during, during the years, second, yeah. third lockdown or whatever it is, we had results in place which were ready to be validated against uh, their own uh, uh, data. Right, so those are. the advantages we had one the clean data was always available mm-hmm. and uh, the information regarding what data to be looked at was very uh, crystal clear mm-hmm. 
and uh, once that information was available jana was able to decide what is going to be the uh, model that could help doing this uh, mm. uh, requirement address this uh, requirement then it went about uh, you know mm. uh, validation and uh, uh, completion of uh, the entire project to its uh, need is how uh, and now we are in the seventh layer where refining the model is model happening is what and the customer is already telling us that it Correct. actually gets better and uh, every time the accuracy is you know we, we, we when we deployed we got a 99.4 i think oh, it has okay. slightly increased also now yeah. i think at least yeah. by at least a point 2 or something like keeping that keeping it at that point itself is big deal big deal is <laughs> and we did the deployment in like what 12 to 15 weeks the first one went Uh, so between the time the ideation started and the first sign off was probably four months was four months. and we are talking about pandemic four months mm-hmm. correct yeah that was the first phase of the pandemic and yeah. we had to do a on premise deployment where our teams had to be in the customer place to yeah. sit and execute and deploy this right it was a very different world yeah. right Yeah, that, I don't want to get back to those memories. <laughs> But um, you know, having said that, Chana, I wanted you to tell us. I know that DJ made it a little easier by saying, "Hey, the first three layers were available because it was a bank," uh, and you had a, a very different experience with another Sioux Falls-based financial institution, which I'll talk about in a bit. But as far as this goes, how did you realize that the three phases are, or the three layers are available, uh, and and uh, it's a bit of a cakewalk, and it, the 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 emphasis or the challenge is going to be more on the infrastructure front when did you identify that and how did you address that and overcome that sure before we go uh, go go i go and answer that question one of the reasons why we uh, we got successful was because of the phenomenal support that we uh, got from the city and bank Absolutely. champions i'm not sure if we can call out names yeah. but i would uh, uh, i would go ahead and then do that Paddy, aka uh, Padmanabhan, and Saruna Kumar. I think they did a fantastic job. Even though they come from a world where uh, data's uh, security function is very, very right. sensitive, uh, the kind of support that both uh, offered to us in making sure that we get to do things the way we wanted uh, is something that I wanted to uh, call out. A big shout out to both of them. Coming back to the question that you asked, actually, we did not realize much. what dj said is more of retrospection oh, okay. and this is something that we would go about doing in the subsequent uh, implementation, uh, implementation. Mm-hmm. let's say for example if we get to have an another bank we would know that we would be in a much solid footing because the the to us uh, it 2019 ish end and 2020 uh, most of the time was spent in deploying it the learning that we got was city in bank was good in terms of making sure that their enterprise information system was set up in a manner where access to data will not be a problem but it took iterations to figure out that a bank uh, always will help you to solve their forecasting and prediction problems better than most of the other enterprises because by design the problem itself is amenable for forecasting and prediction and banks always do a decent job of um, uh, data could also be- because of regulatory complaints needs and things Absolutely. like that okay yeah i think a big thanks to me too um so that's one from a how uh, at least we kind of saved ourselves and also uh uh city and bank the economy of an aa failure was making sure that we stuck to the principles of building software in a you used to tell that to me in a very deliberate manner mm. not uh, being uh overtly uh, what's the right word to say carried over by the technology mm. make sure that we get to uh, do it as deliberately as possible that is one of the things that helped us in making sure that um, uh, be it acquisition of data or making sure that we get to have clarity in terms of telling okay this is transactional data this is demography data this is geographical data and how much of them would would add value which is where the labeling comes in and then build meaningful um interpretations of those independent pieces of information somebody who is 35 years uh, somebody who comes with the 35 years of experience married that with he being a, a public uh, servant 
these two are a combination they cannot be seen in isolation right a value of these two labels will add a different uh, interpretation to how you want this this information to be presented for building a, a forecasting system so the uh, if i have to summarize my answer on these three friends city union bank offered us a phenomenal platform on top of which we are able to build solid models the subsequent work that we need to do in terms of training the model uh, validating the correctness of the model and making sure that we get to deploy the model for accessing those models in a real time for uh, consumption were mostly our challenges the happy news was the technology to support such large data was already there we were able to put that to use we come from a, a background where we have good amount of experience in dealing with large data systems mm. that also helped us but the act of making sure that we continuously build models not on a daily basis it's not like doing ca cd for engineering it is a little different in the model world but being able to put that experience and making sure that we get to publish those models for consumption required ml ops expertise and uh, that is something that we were uh, more than prepared by the time we got into uh, city union bank because of the souks fall experience so fall that is how i would answer my question on all the seven uh, stages that we kind of right now articulated very clearly but we had good amount of you know uh, experience guiding us there on my way am i way of characterizing the answer that was on on fine jana in fact it goes back to as i think about it like i wrote in the article the chakra view have part of it the first layer probably was so false for us mm-hmm. by by the time we got to the seventh layer it was uv yeah, <laughs> yeah yeah that kind of uh, yeah. analogy is what i can look at okay great